guys and welcome to my channel today is a special video we will not play but just talk why am i doing this i got an email with questions hi pocket pianist i am pianist and i try to be corepetito and i want to learn it better and uh, could you tell me how how can you be corepetito how can you come into this job and how can you learn um, uh, the skills of a corepetito, how can you learn prima vista better, how can you learn uh, to play with conductor better, and so on. I answered this email shortly, but I told you I would like to make a video to these questions. And then I was thinking I will do the whole series of uh, videos where I would talk to you guys and tell you about this job because I think there is not so much information about it um, and this is a job which is very interesting very difficult and uh, maybe this information would be not only entertainment but also useful for you guys I try to do it in English please forgive me my horrible English um, sometimes I have to think <laughs> If it doesn't work, I will switch to German and put subtitle, subtitles, English subtitles, but I want just to try to talk to, to you in English, that not only the German part of the world can understand me, uh, the people from Europe, but also the South Americans and Americans and Asians, uh, all my followers. So, uh, in this video, I will just start with a story and I want to talk, uh, to tell you guys how I became a corepetito. I just did my degree in um, Master of Teaching and then I did my degree in like Master Performance. It's like a soloist concert diploma in Switzerland. In the second year of my studies, I started to have lessons for uh, Prima Vista and Corepetition. First, my teacher and I, we were just, you know, reading uh, like easy, rep easy going repertoire, maybe easy arias or sometimes some symphonies uh, with four hands. And then he told me, you need to find a zinger and uh, to bring a zinger. Uh, in a uh, to, to the lesson and so I asked here and there in the vocal classes um, and I started to work with singing students some songs some art songs some areas I really liked it and I worked more and more I started to go to the vocal classes and to help them in their lessons, in the singing lessons. That was a good experience. After, I think, my second or third year, I'm not sure, my professor, uh, who was teaching me Prima Vista and uh, accompaniment, he asked me, do you want to do a summer opera production with me? There was an opera production in a park, like open air, um, that was Haydn's Il Mondo della Luna. And uh, I was thinking, hmm, should I do it or not? Because it's the whole month or six weeks and I would like to go home and, uh, you know, uh, see my family, my mother and uh, maybe go to vacations and everything. And then I thought, no, I will stay and do this job. That was a very good decision for my future. So this I can recommend you guys, and that's not only about how to become, how to, how to be a corpetitor. Uh, never say no to possibilities. Just take it and do it. So I stayed in Switzerland for the summer and started to work in this opera production. That was the first time. So we had rehearsals every morning and every evening. Uh, with the piano, I was playing all the rehearsals, I was working with the singers, staging. Then the orchestra came. In the orchestra, I was playing the cembalo. And then I did all the um, 
uh, shows. That was a great experience for me. I also I got to learn some other adult singers there, and that was also a very good um, thing for my future. I tell you later why. So then I continued my studies at the music academy. My student time was almost at the end, and I was thinking, okay, I need to find a job. I applied to the opera studio in Zurich. They invited me and I started to learn um, the program for the casting. That was just an invitation for the casting. In this moment of my life, I didn't know what I need to do, what I want to do. I liked to work with singers. I had some experience in the music academy, but I could not imagine what I would do in the future. I just knew that I don't want to teach, to teach children piano. I didn't like to do it. So I needed like alternative. Okay. So I prepared this uh, casting for opera studio in Zurich and I was waiting um, for this day. And one day I was in a party with friends and there was a singer who was working at the theater here at the opera company. He was a friend of mine and he was a singer from this summer production I did a couple of years ago as a student. He saw me and he told me, hey, I want to tell you something. There is a job offer at the theater for pianists. Do you want to do it? And I was like, but you know, I, I'm so young. I don't have experience. And he told me, you should go and play for them because I recommended you. Wow, thank you. I asked him for the program. The program for the casting was a bit different than the program for the casting in Zurich. That was Figaro, Finale, Second Act. It's always like obligatory. Yeah. So if you want to do this job, the first thing you have to learn is the Figaro, Finale, Second act, okay. Uh, and then I had to learn Electra, the first scene, the Ma uh, Magda. But Electra is the zero stunde, yeah, very complicated. And then I prepared the, the beginning of La Bohème, the first uh, scene also, it's very difficult to play, it's very fast. And uh, I don't know, maybe some of you don't know, when you do a casting for a repetitor's job, you have to play the stuff and to sing it at the same time. So you really need to learn it very well. I learned it in two weeks, everything. And um, they invited me for, um, for the casting. I did the casting and I won the job. So. That was a casting in two round, like two rounds. Uh, the first round, I needed to play everything, all this, and to sing, and to work with a singer. There was a young baritone who was singing Conte, Figaro, and I needed to coach him to do, to show them how I coach uh, a singer. And then I had a pose, and then I needed uh, to coach another singer with some modern repertoire, there was Janacek, something, almost prima vista, so I just got the score like a couple of minutes before and I was like, oh wow, well, I, I don't know it, but I needed to coach him, yeah? And that was it. Sometimes in these castings it's also prima vista part, where you have just to uh, play the prima vista, uh, something you don't know, something crazy, something difficult, um, but I I had just to coach Prima Vista. That was it. That was my way. And then I stayed in the theater. I'm working here almost 15 years now. This is my 15th season. I started very young and I love this job. I really love this work. I love to work with singers. I love to learn the repertoire. I really like that every year I learn 
like five or six new operas and um, I think it's amazing. So that was my way. Uh, you asked me if there are some special studies uh, beside the opera studio. I don't know. I think that today there are some music universities offering this like competition, competition um, that you can study. You can study for sure Liedbegleitung, which is art song accompaniment. This is also very useful, but if you want to be a repetitor, this is not enough. Yeah, so to uh, to work at the opera, it's uh, it's a bit different. You have to be in orchestra. You have to play with conductors. Uh, this is different. It's not just accompaniment, but also studying accompaniment can be very useful for you. So. What is the other way to get the to to to, be, to, be, to become a corrupetitor? I think you have to use every possibility to work with voices first. If you're a student, just go and help other students, like singing students, um, with their repertoire. Work with them. Learn about the voice. Learn to feel the voice. You will need it. If you have a possibility to work with conductors in the conducting classes, do it. This is also a great experience to learn different types of conducting, different styles, to react on them, yeah? Because you have always to react on the conductor, even if you don't understand the conductor. <laughs> this, this is a very difficult part of our job. If you can study Corpetition at the music academy or university, do it. But this is actually, I think this is not, um, not obligatory. Um, what you need to do is to play Prima Vista very well, because this is the thing you really need in this job. And you will need it always and you will need it more and more and more. You can try to come into an opera, opera studio, like a young artist program in a theater to play for them. And this would be probably the best way to come into this world, I think. Yeah, I didn't do it. I just got the job at the theater. I was really lucky, probably. But it's um, maybe the most common way to play for the opera studio. Uh, but also, don't forget that you need every contact to singers, to conductors, um, to the theatre. So if you can go and do a practica in an opera house, sometimes, sometimes they look for helpers in productions when they don't have enough, um, enough staff, enough uh, pianists, they uh, need like practicants, maybe it's also useful to ask to ask an opera house directly like hi i'm interested to learn this job maybe you have a, like practicum for me or i can come and see how is the production uh, gets done uh, maybe i can learn something like yeah hospitals this is what i can tell you what i know about this way so in the next video um, I want to talk to you guys about the skills of the corepetitor. What do you need to be able to do? What is important as a professional, as a pianist, as a personality? Because this job is very like multi-dimensional. Uh, <laughs> it needs a lot of skills from you as a person, as a pianist, and as a musician, as a professional. I think that could be very interesting to talk about this. I will also make a video about the repertoire, about the casting, maybe how, uh, how to work on a, um, audition repertoire. For example, on Figaro Finale 2, uh, on Electra uh, Beginning or La Bohème, uh, what is important. Tell me if you like 
this format of videos. Tell me if it's okay if I do it in English or would you prefer German with subtitles? I will think about it. And uh, stay with me on my channel.